This is something you only see once in a lifetime. We spotted it in the wild. Litter. <laughs> the content that I enjoy watching is the thing that I don't like doing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's just great to be back on the water. Went to the lost and found, and that led to a private invitation. I was like, <laughs> with a jet boat. Wind shelter. It's kind of rude out there. Hopefully, I'll take you some pretty pictures. Yeah. Some pretty snappies. Kiora Maids. We are cream crackered after editing this video. Woo! We are munted to say that our boat is stuck up in Queensland with headwinds. No worries, because it's sweet as. We thought about giving you all of our observations about New Zealand. What do you think, Nick? Should we? Yeah. No. Choice, bro. We wish you a happy new year, and we hope that you enjoyed this tiki tour of New Zealand. We'll be taking along the chili bin, our togs, and our jandals. You know, to go tramping in the wops. And check out as many batches as possible. You saw some of the North Island in our previous videos. In this episode, we're heading south. We spent six weeks traveling to the South Island and making a counterclockwise circuit. We were there in very early spring, before it got warm and sunny. But we thought with an all-terrain vehicle like this, we could go through anything. The sheep, we found them. I wanna just watch their behavior. There's a big uh, hubbub over here. Uh oh. Somebody's getting frisky. Oh, they're oh, knocking yeah. heads. Oh. I'm glad there's a fence between us and those dangerous sheep. The sand is warm. The sun's coming out. We're here in Tarong. 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 Anyway, it is beautiful. We're going to try and earn some of those calories that we've been indulging in over the last two or three weeks by hiking to the top of Mount Ma Manganui. Manganui? Manganui. We need help with that. We do. All these Maori names are really hard for us to pronounce. So, apologies in advance. <laughs> I love that hat. I mean, you look good in everything. But Should I wear it? Only if you want. I mean, you your head deserves so much better. I think I got a winner. I it, like it. Yeah, it's not tight and I feel like it has a good shape for Let's my go. head. <laughs> No, no more procrastinating. We've got to conquer 138th of Everest. It's funny. It doesn't look that steep or that big. I don't know. We'll see. Here we go. Making our first incline. Hi. It's a pretty sweet spot, this actually. Is gorgeous. Yeah. Nice anchorage, I guess, as long as you don't have one of these big tankers going by. Yeah. Nice spot. I can see why they call this the Bay of Plenty. <laughs> you got this long spit with this huge workout facility. I mean, mountain. Turning over a new leaf. Oh yeah, That's I turned it. I turned it. We have been off the rails. I've reached that point. I've reached that point where I have to have the right angle. <laughs> you have to shoot me from the right spot. Or it's just not gonna look good. I have to say this is a, uh, a geographical setup that I haven't seen before. Uh, most of the town is situated on this long spit of sand, which provides a beautiful beach. And I'm guessing they call it the Bay of Plenty because of all the sea life. I mean, there's so many birds, and the beach is filled with shells, meaning there's lots of crustaceans and that sort of thing. And then along the spit, it's focused around the surfing industry. I've seen little surf, what would you call them, trucks or trailers, where they'll rent out the boards and give you a wetsuit and teach you how to surf. And then on the inside of the spit, it's a nice protected bay. Uh, we've got a commercial port here with big container ships and then moorings for, for pleasure craft. And it looks like a really nice spot to put down the anchor or grab a mooring for a few days and, and just kind of chill and hang out. It's got a good vibe. I, I do have to admit though, the weather's making a huge difference. It's been cloudy, it's been gray, it's been cool and I don't know, is this the first nice day in, 
I don't know, five or six days? Yeah. Let's do it. We come around the corner and there's just the cutest little sheep grazing. Oh, so New Zealand. Here is nature's lawnmowers. Wind them up, let them go, and you'll have grass that's trimmed to the perfect length. I don't think they want to be touched though. Every time we make a move, they say, ah, no. <laughs> It's hard, it's hard. Definitely out of shape. I had three months not really being able to hike or do my jumping jacks, things like that. And uh, I feel it. Oh, I gotta build it back up. One mountain at a time. Ready to sail in here? Yeah? Sure. Looks pretty uh, steep. 500 meters to go, which is 1,500 feet. Okay, here we go. Oh my God, I think we made it. I feel the endorphins. Cameras just cannot do it justice with that huge blue Pacific expanse looks like. Whew, it just goes on forever. Well, this is obviously the spot. I mean, the view is pretty much perfect. This is the view I was dreaming of. Woo! A spectacular. Good job, us. We did it. Boom! Day one of our new leaf. Yeah, we turned it over and didn't like what we saw. All right, what do we got here? Main beach. Sounds good to me. Down, 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 down. That's right, stay left. <laughs> stay left. There's something here in New Zealand, we gotta stay left. I keep wanting to go to the right. I think that's how they know I'm not from here. Well, we conquered that mountain. Pretty awesome, feeling good, feeling the endorphins, sense of accomplishment. I'd say that's a pretty cool campsite. You got your mountain exercise right outside your doorstep along with this awesome beach and restaurants. Good job today. Yeah, good job to you. Let's see. Boom! Now what? What's next? That's a silly question. More coffee. Oh! Next, we headed southeast to the sleepy surf town of Ahope. We got another round of rather rotten weather, but not everybody frowns about the big winds and the big seas. She comes back. I don't know what the deal is with New Zealand and their paper towels, but I got the last two in the entire store. What? Yeah, there's plenty of toilet paper, but these are the last two paper towels. And thus explains the mystery of every Airbnb that we go to that has no paper towels. No paper towels. They can't get them down here. Or they're just really encouraging us not to use them. Was it, were they like 50 bucks? I didn't even look. Oh, we kind of hold up in the A-frame the last few days, but now we're gonna go walk around the downtown of Fakatane. I hope I'm saying that right. Got the yacht club coming up here. With Halloween coming up, I've adopted my costume, which is the ninja video producer. All right. Cameras come out of nowhere. I can slip into the shadows at the drop of a hat and emerge with my camera ready to tell the YouTuber vlogging story. Is that redundant? Tell me what you see, Fakatani. Can you see into the future? All joking aside, 
A little further down the dock is an eerie scene. Many of these tour boats have for sale signs on them. Up until three years ago, they were running tours out to Fakari, also known as White Island, an active volcano. It's about 30 miles offshore. In 2019, 22 people were killed when it erupted. If you want to learn more, there is a very well-made but intense documentary on Netflix. It's called The Volcano, Rescue from Fakari. We didn't last too long in the town of Fakatani because uh, the stores were kind of closed up. We were walking around the downtown area today and we're like, where is everybody? I mean, all the shops are closed. I mean, what is it, like 2 o'clock and everything's closed up? And then we're like, oh, maybe they like to enjoy their weekends, not just go shopping on the weekends. It's very peaceful here in New Zealand. That's the feeling I get. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of green. There's a lot of peace. It's time to pack up again. We are hitting the road today. Going to do, uh, well, about seven hours headed down to Wellington, New Zealand the bottom end of the North Island, where we're gonna catch a ferry and head to the South Island, which, as we've heard, is a completely different story. Oh my God, do you see what I see? I see shadows. I is see that sun? The sun. Finally. Making an appearance. Doing our last dash out of the A-frame. All right, we just arrived in Wellington. Nick is checking us in, and I think it's like three o'clock. We have plenty of daylight to go explore Wellington and walk around. Cuba Street, the famous street in Wellington. And I can see why. This is where all the cool people hang out. It's got great food, great people watching, cool stores with really uh, eclectic clothes. They like the vintage down here. I'm not sure I'm into the current style. I feel like the current style is ugly. Like the uglier it is, the cooler it is. I'm just being me, I gotta be honest. It just shows how old you are. <laughs> well, it's all the ugliest stuff from like 1984, 1987. I don't know, it's just me. You said you were looking for something cute. I know. You're I not could, gonna find it in this town. I could. I definitely could. I like this stuff. Look at the argyle. You like there. this stuff? Look at the purple and turquoise argyle. I had that sweater. What, like as a kid. 1981? Yes, I want it back. Well, I should have kept it. Look at these socks doing yoga. There you go. I can't believe we stumbled upon this place. It's a gallery of guitars. <laughs> You've been wanting to pick up a New Zealand guitar. These are all New Zealand dollars, so they're all at a discount. <laughs>
here on the Kai Rahe, which is a huge ferry from Inter Islander. And we're here in Wellington, headed over to Picton on South Island, New Zealand. We are getting so lucky with the weather. Forecast is for calm conditions through the Cook Straits. And that's where the Tasman Sea hits the Pacific Ocean. I think we got really lucky. That was uh, that was really pretty smooth. You can barely even tell the ferry was moving across the Cook Strait. You can see why it would be really, really bouncy there sometimes. You got the Tasman Sea to your west, you got the Pacific Ocean to your east, and uh, all sorts of confluent weather patterns. It could be pretty rough, I bet. I like the little uh, little barf bags I got handy up there in the saloon. Yeah, I feel like it's just great to be back on the water. I'd like to be back on our own boat, go on our own speed to our own anchorages, but this will do. <laughs> I just can't wait to get there and start exploring the South Island. hour ferry ride we've got to drive an hour and 43 minutes to our Airbnb in Nelson this might be one of my favorite Airbnbs everything very quiet gorgeous view of the Tasman just oh shook shooey I wouldn't say it's an early start, but we're getting out for a, an adventure today. Came up here to Abel Tasman a National Park, I'm not sure what. Abel Tasman Park, been told that this is the jewel of the jewel in the crown of the South Island. So we're looking forward to it. What is that thing? Uh, it's a stick. <laughs> this is crossed like a chicken and a duck. Hey. He's friendly. You've been fed before. <laughs> You got some goodies before? <laughs> Do we have any goodies? That's why they got into a fight. That one said, I get this car. Still vlogging. What do you say to the people who are really confused? Like, what do you mean? I thought you guys were vloggers. I don't get the joke. We are. We are vlogging. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try and embrace it, you know. I think we were just trying to make fun of ourselves. That's what we like to do. That's when we're happiest is when we're just keeping it light and airy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. We don't take ourselves that seriously. We really don't. You ready? I'm ready. I'm packing a good 25 pounds of camera gear. Hopefully I'll take you some pretty pictures. Yeah. Some pretty snappies. Oh shoot, I wasn't recording any of this. <laughs> See, that's, that's how bad of vlogging we are. <laughs> Check this out. We just came in here to use the restroom, but I'm glad we looked. Uh, drones aren't allowed in Abel Tasman at all. Um, the gent outside said it's because that it's sometimes uh, the ladies on the beach don't exactly have full cover. We saw these signs all over the place. Your drone is not welcome. All right, we're at our hiking starting point here at Abel Tasman. And we got some tips from our, our host, Steve, who said, be sure to check out Separation Point. It is life-changing. We're like one of about five cars. So I think the shoulder season situation is suiting us just perfectly. They say in the summer, this area swells to 25,000 people. Deep. Right off the bat. You got this. Hey, 
Evidently they had uh, really bad flooding here in August. And so there are all these washouts as they're known. Basically mudslides. I thought this was just the normal thing around here, but evidently it was really bad. Nearby Nelson was completely flooded out. Mudslides all the way through houses and stuff like that. All right, we just made it out to the beach and now we need to look for the orange markers. This is stunning. There's nobody else out here. Wow. We've been hiking for about 35 minutes and I figure we've got another maybe two hours to go to our point. Those are our new friends, um, Liz and Michelle, just uh, walking off. They're from Australia, Gold Coast, and they invited us to come see them in Australia. So, got their information. They're gonna show us some nature in Oz. Okay, we made it to separation point. And oh, there's a lighthouse out here and there's sea lions and a really steep rock cliff. Nick has already embarked on it. Um, I'm a little hesitant. I'm gonna have some water, rest my feet for a minute and uh, just check out the views. It's gorgeous up here.
worth it. And I'm glad I didn't know how hard it was gonna be. <laughs> you tired? I'm really tired, my feet are tired. Woo! But it feels good. All the little breaks really help. And it's so gorgeous. I feel like I'm in Lord of the Rings. Are you Gandalf? Yes. I don't know who I am. I've lost my way. Wow. You can bring this whole thing all the way I'm back. I'm getting attached to it. Let's go. All right, I don't know how many Kims we got left. I but think we got at least three Kims. Three Kims left? Three Kims. Two hills and a beach. Woo! Or three hills, I'm not sure. Woo! Getting tired. That's uh, an offering to somebody else. So they're gonna need it. Goodbye, Stick. I think I can do it without you. Home stretch. Here she comes. <laughs> How are you? Mrs. Megan. Are we done? Almost. Almost. Hey, at least your hair looks good. Does it? Uh, Always. I had it done just around the corner. Uh, you stopped at the salon. <laughs> Woo! Last hill! I think that was at least 15, 16 hills. Wow. <gasps> you really spend like a couple weeks out here, I think. <laughs> Abel Tasman uh, Park. We did one hike, <laughs> and there are dozens of hikes and beautiful beaches. It would be cool to camp on a beach. Yeah, right? Actually, swim out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Met some cool people. I love meeting people on the trail. Everybody's so friendly, kind of like cruisers, travelers. This guy drove 40 minutes to uh, meet us at a gas station. He drove 40 minutes to sell a guitar for $100 in New Zealand. That, my friends, is like 50 something bucks. Seven. 57 bucks. <laughs> so he must really want to get rid of this guitar or just again, the Kiwis are cool. Kiwi cool, that's, that's the theme here. People are very, very nice here. From Abel Tasman, we headed for the northwest coast of the South Island. This is a rugged coastline, when we could see it. Aside from a couple gift shops, there's not a lot out here. It's beautiful, but the sand flies, they're out for blood. The road takes you well inland to get through the river valleys, which are spectacular when the sun's out. Even the signs are so friendly here. Your speed affects everybody. Slow down. According to the map, there should be a beautiful coastline about a kilometer to our west. But no such luck seeing it. The vegetation along the roads is high and you can't see much. We saw helicopters everywhere. That's gotta be a great way to see this country especially if you don't have much time. Bit of drive today. Let's get some exercise, shall we? The Fox Glacier. Let's do this. It's 
spring here in New Zealand, but it actually looks like fall when you see all the little leaves on the ground. What we're sitting on here is called a moraine. People talk about global warming. It's actually global climate change. The Earth's average temperatures are, well, historically, they've warmed and they've cooled. They've warmed and then they've cooled. In higher latitude areas like this, when the atmosphere, the climate cools, the glaciers build and build and build and come down the valleys. The sign here is saying this is as far down the valley as the glacier got back in 1600. And since then, the climate's been warming and the glaciers have been retreating. What causes this is somewhat natural, somewhat man-made, and we're still trying to decide which one is which. Nick graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Geography. Let's see if he still knows his stuff. Then I got a master's in atmospheric and oceanic science. So I know a little bit about the global climate system. We're, uh, we're way below the terminus of the Fox Glacier here. I'm not pulling this out of my hat, saw it on the sign, but the flow rate at the top of the glacier is about five meters per day. And the flow rate at the bottom of the glacier is between about a third and a half a meter per day. So in a lot of ways, a glacier is like a big snow funnel. You get precipitation at the top, rain, snow, and then as it creeps down the valley, it condenses into ice. And that ice eventually gets down to lower levels and melts. Um, Glaciers worldwide have been retreating for more than a hundred years, I believe, depending on what part of the world you're in. Every once in a while, somebody will ask me about global warming, global climate change, and uh, as somebody with a background in this, I'll say, human-induced climate change is a real thing. Global emissions of CO2, methane, and other greenhouse gases have been warming the atmosphere to record levels year after year after year. And it's already having changes on the biosphere and places like this. I'm not talking anything about fault finding. I mean, it's not like we flew here on our own wings powered by granola bars and uh, chickpeas. We flew here in an airplane. We've been driving around in a car. We have been burning fossil fuels like crazy just to get to this spot. So uh, I'm not casting stones from my glass house. But it makes me a little sad and it makes me feel a little guilty actually to stand here and see the effects of burning all these fuels on the planet. We'll be long gone by the time we see really, really devastating effects, but there's no doubt in my mind that burning all these dead dinosaurs is having a huge uh, impact on the planet. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. We're driving along the Haast Pass, which is right in the valley here, and we're close to the river. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's interesting because there's not a lot of places to actually stop and get on the river here. There's a lot of fencing and I'm not quite sure if it's for livestock or they're just trying to protect people from hurting themselves. But uh, we're looking for spots along the river to stop and get close to it because it is spectacular. We are getting so lucky with the weather. It's a little brisk, but the sunshine just makes all the difference. 
in a couple of days, there's gonna be 100% chance of rain pretty much everywhere we go. So we're soaking every last drop of sunshine in and making some tracks. I think we're gonna head into Wanaka. Tonight's the first night I haven't had a Airbnb booked for us. So we're living on the edge. It's Labor Day here in New Zealand and it's Saturday. I think because we're on the shoulder season, we're not gonna have any trouble finding a motel for the night. Wanaka, we like you. All right, Lara, I see why this is your favorite town in all of New Zealand. Okay, I'm excited to get, get bikes and explore it. This place is cute as fuck. Look at this. Oh my God, turn around, look it's at the, look at these cute little There's our cart thing. Southeast Asian <gasps> waffles. Oh no. Yeah. We're gonna be burrito. Somewhat spicy. Yeah? That's what Jack. <laughs> it's been a drought. I haven't had anything spicy in like five or six days. It's been sad. How high did you go? Because they had like a whole scale. High enough. <laughs> I really like how Wanaka's got all these trails. They're making it very convenient for people to get out and enjoy. We were gonna go for a much longer hike today on Roy Mountain, but it's actually closed for lambing season from October 1st to November 10th. Good thing we checked. I'm not sure what lambing season means, does that mean they're giving birth to the lambs? Lambing season means the itty bitty little cutie stuffed animal looking animals are out there prancing around eating grass. Is there anything cuter than a little lamb? <laughs> I, I never liked eating lamb. I just don't like the taste of it. But now that I've seen them in person, there's no way I could eat a little lamb. here at Mount Iron. I want to say Iron Mountain. Gorgeous view. Wow. Nick, if we lived here, I would have to hike this every day. It is absolutely spectacular. The Maori have been here for centuries, maybe five or six hundred years. And then the white people started coming in 1884. Here. 
we have a viewer who has been texting with us since we arrived in New Zealand a month ago. His name's Mark, and he's given us so many great tips, invited us to stay at his house in Auckland, and we happen to both be in Queenstown at the same time. So I messaged with his wife, and she is going to bring him to this cafe. <laughs> he has no idea. And uh, we're gonna surprise him. We, uh, we got these, these newspapers we're gonna hide behind, and we got this great. <laughs> what do you think? This is gonna be a good caper? It's a caper, all right. Oh my God! <laughs> What a surprise! Hi. 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 What can we get you? What's your impression? Okay, at Queenstown, you are cute. But you've got a lot of construction going right now, and I am not impressed with that. I forgive you. I feel like I'm in New York meets Switzerland. Yes, New York meets Switzerland, meets Alaska, meets Colorado. This is a very cosmopolitan little town. Lots of restaurants, great shopping. Woo! I had to resist a lot of things. Okay, it's 9.30 at night, and the best thing about this Airbnb is its walking distance, like a five-minute walking distance to the onsen hot pools. Onsen is Japanese for hot pools. So we're gonna close it down and then come back here and have a nice relaxing sleep. Nick just said this better be worth it. Traveling, travel partners, yeah. partners in crime. Partners in crime. Okay. <laughs> I want to live in this spa. <laughs> I'm so relaxed. Oh, so relaxing. My God. Kind of melted in there. <sighs> we had refreshments, ice cream, and almost saw some stars. Saw a UFO in the valley. <laughs> Another long journey home. We're staying about 100 meters from here. Yeah. I'm so confused. Yeah. I we're love taking, this. We're taking the long way. Yeah, I think this happens a lot around yeah. here. <laughs> they, they don't want you to have to go upstairs. It's too strenuous. Well, people... Man, New Zealand, I'm counting on you for at least a 9 or 10 o'clock garbage pickup. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that I didn't pack right for this trip. Um, well, I guess we assumed we'd be going to the tropics. And uh hasn't quite worked out that way. Nice hat. Hats. Hats. <laughs> you know, you get the wall hat. Then you get the sun hat for the rain. Yeah, we just can't stay in the Airbnb any longer. But we've got to get some exercise and catch some views of this river canyon. Do you actually have a rain jacket? I do, let's, <clears throat> let's test it out. You're smart. I'm not sure if it's uh, new tech or old tech. We're going up the... We're going up the overbridge track, trail, the overbridge tunnel. And uh, this is where they run the jet boats and spin around in circles. We're taking the slower pace. <laughs> I think it's also an old gold mining trail. And so we're gonna retrace the steps of the gold miners. Maybe we'll find some gold and strike it rich. 
There you go. Hey, this is fun. I'm yeah. actually enjoying it. I'm super protected from the elements and beautiful out. You get to walk along the river instead of fly on it with a jet boat. <laughs> that doesn't look too fun to you. No, it's fun to watch them, you know, and uh, but then take the slower pace. Yeah. so nice here. I really like it. Yeah. Except for these roots here. <laughs> these roots down and coming off these trees. Oh my god, I could trip and break my foot again. I hate this place. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> oh, I love the nature here. Look at all this. And everybody's out enjoying We're it. We're up by the river. And, and they said it was going to rain. It's not raining. It's not even raining. I love how green and nice it is here. Except, look up here, there's a parking lot just ruining oh everything. Oh my god, I thought we were on a trail. God, this place sucks. What are we gonna do? I hate it. Let's I leave. I thought people liked it here. I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> we're joking, obviously. Seemed every time we turned around, we were finding another magical spot. And it seems like the Kiwis take extra care in developing their urban environments. This river is literally a stone's throw from housing developments. So we're going for a bike ride here outside of Aerotown. All right, it's gonna be super fun. short on profundity <laughs> on this ride. I gotta tell you. It's gorgeous. Now I got coffee in the brain. Coffee on the brain. Twin, we're taking the Twin Peaks loop. back and it's starting to rain. Perfect timing. It started raining literally on the last turn before we got back to the Airbnb. I don't think it gets any closer than that.
Well, today's the uh, capper, the highlight of the southbound journey on the South Island of New Zealand, Milford Sound. Been told it's the eighth wonder of the world. Long drive ahead of us, and we're ready to get started. I mean, that cute little guy, he just wanted some of these. I know. So, so I want to give him a rice cake. I'm finally impressed. The Milford Sound, it's a long ways to get out here, but I'd say it's definitely unique. Hurry, before the sand flies get me. Tell him about the dirty little secret. You can't see him, thank goodness, on the video, but uh, there are all these little tiny fruit fly things that leave the nastiest bite. Worse than a mosquito bite, really. This is the Milford Sound area, and I'd say I've never seen so many waterfalls in one place. This was all heavily glaciated, with the last ice age about 11,000 years ago. The glaciers are gone, but still the precipitation continues and that all cascades down across this landscape. It's, it's pretty spectacular. Can I just say we scored with the weather. This place would be gorgeous in the rain or snow, but it is beautiful with the sunlight casting all kinds of shadows and I'm ready for a boat ride. Let's go. set us up with the mighty Milford. Oh wait, that's not it. Oh, <laughs> what is happening? You got us the smallest boat in the fleet. <laughs> oh my God, they said it was the best. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs>
miles from canals are there? Uh, there's a few females up there and there's some juvenile males. The rounder ones are the females because they're not that far away from dropping their bucks. Are these springtime? Uh, late spring into early summer. Some are even born sort of late as Christmas New Year's. Sterling Falls, just a word of warning, it will get quite wet outside. So if you're looking for a nice cold shower, head out onto the bow or maybe up onto the top deck. If you're looking for shelter, obviously you'll find it inside or underneath the canopy on the upper deck. You ready? Unbelievable. This is the most amazing day ever. Ever. Woo! What would you say today's conditions are like? Perfect. You know, um, you want either lots and lots of rainfall for the waterfalls or beautiful blue sky days. And today you've got both blue sky and waterfalls. So it's usually one or the other. And this boat is great because it can get close to all the rocks. A little bit smaller boat, really maneuverable and articulated rudder so we can turn on the spot without bow thrusters. So yeah, it's a perfect purpose built fueled in boat. You did a great job. Tell me your name. Kahurangi. Kahurangi. Thank you so much. No worries, my pleasure. Uh well, wow, after an epic day, it's an exciting finish because they close the road, the one and only road, back to Tiano. Tiana? Tiano. Uh, in about, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing a lot of road construction, and so during the week, they close it between 6.30 p.m. and 5 a.m. And that started today. So I called him this morning and said, hey, are we going to be able to get out? And he said, oh yeah, we factored that in. So I think we're good. the mysterious Moreki boulders and we don't know how they were formed or when. I don't know if anybody does. Uh, but it's high tide and I think it's a little hard to see them. There may be more under the water there. But it's a beautiful warm day. It's kind of wild, 24 hours, we go from the Tasman Sea to the Pacific Ocean. This indeed is a rather small country. All right, we're in Omaru and we're walking to a museum. It is hot out. Are you hot? You're wearing shorts. Baby, I'm always hot. Me I'm overdressed as usual. Okay, who knew that Omaru was so darn cute? I'm glad we stopped here to see the blue penguins. 
because uh, this is a beautiful little town, very historic. Do I look like a penguin? You do look like a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess penguin these, walk. these are the blue penguins with yellow eyes, or I don't know, blue penguins. They're little, like this big. Hope we can see them. And apparently the penguin colony has a stadium seating for 350 people. So Omaru is known for their penguins. Surely we'll see a few of the uh, Non-conformists. City dwellers. The city dwellers going out for the nightlife. Whoop whoop. <laughs> the non-conformists. <laughs> That's why we're out here. We're the non-conformists too. Oh, we're out here waiting for the little blue penguins to come home from fishing. We could go to the colony, but we wouldn't be able to shoot any film for you guys. So we're out here looking for the penguins on our own. And it was funny, we talked to a local shop owner today and he said that, uh, oh yeah, about a couple hundred penguins go to the, the colony, like the suburbs, but then there's lots of penguins that come downtown and actually nest in the, uh, in the buildings. I think we might have to wait a little bit longer till sunset because they're kind of shy. coffee top up before we head to Akora. And Akora is a caldera. This is a volcano to the east of East, yeah, to the east of Christchurch. And we are going to do an adventure tonight. We're going to stay on a farm, a sheep farm, and we're going to have a private viewing of some penguins. There's a colony nearby, and so we are going to get an up close and personal view of uh, some penguins. We're gonna sleep in a tree house and we're super excited.
up in the adventure quotient. Uh, this is going to be a... Uh, Flea Bay, I think. We're headed to Flea Bay. This is a four-wheel drive only. Steep grade, steep drop off to head to a, a no internet kind of isolated farm out here in the middle of nowhere where evidently these penguins are going to come in to roost this evening. We're finally going to get up close and, and personal. It's called the Pohatu farm where they raise sheep. And what I understand is they, this family came here a very long time ago to farm sheep and then the penguins just happened to come into their bay. And so now they share that with the public. Homestead. Family here has been around at least 50 years. It's pretty freaking isolated. I rode in was no joke. First gear for sure. Sheep, cattle roaming the hills. Seal comes up to greet us as we get down to the beach. And evidently, this is the real deal penguin country. Okay, our tour guides just came to get us. It's time to see the penguins. It's the witching hour. Woo, tide is out. Let's go see these penguins. The uh, form-fitting garment as we get ready to hide from the penguins. The penguins are very sensitive to color and light. No, they will never see them. The tallest one in the world at the moment is the emperor penguin and we actually have the most diversity of penguin species in New Zealand than anywhere else in the world. They leave the cheeks, they fatten up, they come back more, almost two weeks, and then they bagger off again. So far I'm seeing a lot of holes, not a lot of penguins. I saw a few penguins. You did? I haven't seen any, haven't seen any penguins haven't seen so far. So these guys evidently are very, very easily disturbed. So we're wearing our camouflage so that we don't spook them with our bright flamboyant colors. And then we're speaking very quietly. We're very soft. Very calm. We don't want to upset the little penguins. Can you catch up or is that the Jacques Cousteau hat on. On. Good morning. The sleep in the treehouse was quite nice. Now I'm in the communal kitchen and I'm making some coffee, getting ready to go feed the sheep. Wow, it's gonna be so fun. I'm gonna be able to pet some sheep finally. Okay, it's 8.45 and 
the lambs are hungry. They normally get fed at 8.30. We're outside the home of Cherie, and she's the grandmother of three little boys. She's feeding them first. <coughs> but they're ready. <laughs> I'm so happy we get to be here to feed the little lambs. Oh, you're messy. You're messy. <laughs> that was my fault. Wow. That's some suction there, kid. Yeah. <laughs> Picked over from the molting process for. What's up? Why are you guys by yourselves? Oh, hi. Hi. What's your name? What's your name? How are you? How are you? How are you? Yeah, what do you think you're doing? Making friends, making friends. You know a dog person, don't you? You know a dog person. Go to work. Off to work with you. And how long have you been protecting the penguins? Um, well, it's well over 30 years, about 35 years anyway. Mm. First of all, we were just shooting predators when we saw them. Mm. And then we started to really get stuck into doing the trapping. It all happened when we were during the farming downturn. And um, we had no money, basically, no money for anything. It was just crazy times. Um, it was a government, it was basically a Labour Party government, <laughs> changed the rules on us. And um, all the progressive farmers who put money into their land to develop land and things like that, they all went broke. And um, yeah, we, we managed to survive because we went into the um, ecotourism. Really? Yeah, brilliant. that's all that kept us on our farms. And the first ecotourism thing we did was the Banks track, which is all those walkers going through. Wow. Of course, the beauty of that is it gave us the excuse we always wanted to actually protect our special areas right throughout the farm. So it's really good. It's amazing how good things come out of really seemingly bad. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. And we stayed in the cottage, the tree house. Oh, yes. And how yes. long have the cottages been there? Oh, the, the tree house, that's only been there for about five years. Yeah. Very yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, yeah, cute, cute little building. We felt like we were in summer camp. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh, it was very first world. Yeah. Nice bathrooms and showers. Yeah. Well, at least you had a bathroom door. People kept on leaving the bathroom door open and the wind catches it and tore it right off. So oh, no. yesterday it didn't have a door. Really? <laughs> With our time running short, we had to make a quick dash up the coast to Picton to catch our ferry. We hadn't found much online about the northeast coast of the South Island, and I get the feeling not a lot of folks spend much time here. But we found mile after mile after mile of uninhabited white sandy beaches. If we make it back, we're definitely gonna spend some more time here. our crossing to the North Island and uh, I'm a little sad to see the South Island in the rearview mirror. We were thinking we were going to be finished with New Zealand but new doors are opening and we may linger a little longer. New Zealand has got us. That was kind of cool. We lost a little piece of camera gear 
went to the Lost and Found, and that led to a private invitation to head to the bridge of the boat. That was pretty freaking cool. I like to think it's the little hidden gem in the fleet because the bottom deck carries all rails so you cannot carry passengers down there so therefore if you're lucky to get on the ship the passenger load is normally smaller so oh, it's a oh, wow. thanks for letting us aboard good <laughs> foot on the captain of the Eretiri. And so what's uh, what's her basic measurements? What's the tonnage on this? Uh, 17,000 tons DRT, uh, almost 600 feet long. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's, it's, it's 21 meters in the beam, so that must be close to 70 feet. And the bridge wings are a bit wider and the drafts are 5.75 meters, so 20 feet. How long have you been uh, driving this boat? Oh, a few well now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, it's a bit different, you know, it's a bit longer than the yacht here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it goes to windward really well. <laughs> a little bit more horsepower. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's diesel electric and uh, it's, we've got six engines here. And uh, it gets rough down in the Cook Strait. Today's a nice day. But, you know, sometimes we're getting eight, nine, ten metres, twelve metres. You know. Twelve metres. Yeah, we stop sailing at twelve. Yeah. And you got to take it on the beam off. Oh, yeah. Do we, I don't so much so when it gets 12 meters on the beam, but this one handles really well. It's got stabilizers and that, so okay. yeah, you're still doing oh, 18 knots, eight, nine meters. Yeah, how fast do you have to be going to get the stabilizers oh, working? Oh, well, they've worked probably about 12 knots. Yeah, but the faster you go, the better it is. Yeah, so the, with yeah. six engines, how much uh, shaft horsepower can you get? And about 20,000 horsepower. Yeah, so at the moment we're burning probably 30 litres a minute. Yeah, it's shaft drive, it's conventional fixed propellers and then uh, two bow thrusters and high lift rudders. So the rudder's got big flaps on the back. Flaps on the rudder? Yeah, so it's a flat rudder, high lift rudder, so it means the ship can push itself sideways. Good question on the helms. Yeah. Since you have several, mm -hmm. how do you transfer authority? Do you have to do it manually or is it...? So this is um, our helm control, so we've got two rudders. And so right now it's set on set uh, system three. System three is autopilot. And then we have independent and synchro steering. So in synchro steering, this uh, little tiller here will basically operate both the rudders. But as soon as we go to independent, you can drive them ind independently or separately. But if we want to transfer a control to the main helm, there's a in control button right here. So as soon as you press that, it overrides everything and we'll get steering at the centre helm. And then likewise on the bridge wings, there's an exact same button like that that says in command and you just press it. So it's the last one that gets pushed that yeah. has authority. So um, as soon as, yeah, essentially if, you've, if, I've pressed, if I press this here right now, it will take it off autopilot and bring it onto helm because it's just sort of like a safety thing that we need to be able to get control right away. So yeah, that's what was your name? Sean. Sean. Yeah. Your first officer. Uh, I'm the second officer. Second. Yeah. Okay. And luckily, the masters on this ship and some of the other ships let us um, let us practice berthing and driving the ship at times. So they'll let us con the ship in in perfect weather, obviously, but just letting us get a proper feel for it. And just because if something happens to the master or something, you need to be able to understand what the ship's doing, how she handles it to get her to safety. Well, tell me what that feels like. Does the blood pressure get uh, elevated? You start breathing a little? Oh yeah, spe especially if they're not telling you what to do. You're thinking two steps ahead, so go slow and yeah, just uh, as long as you're keeping in control, you know, they don't let her uh, drive you, you drive it type of thing. So yeah, that's it. What were you doing before the smaller boats? Or? No, this is uh, I'm the first one in my family to go to sea, so yeah, wow. don't know why. So most most people don't know why. Yeah, I certainly don't. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. Nah. <laughs>
So Aotearoa, and I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, even though I'm a New Zealander. Um, Aotearoa is uh, the Maori name for New Zealand, which is the land of the long white cloud. And what happens with New Zealand, because of all the moisture and because we're in a subtropical um, environment, the white clouds sit across the top of New Zealand. And when the Maori were coming down and navigating, they were looking for New Zealand and the land of the long white cloud. And that's Aotearoa. This is uh, Maritime New Zealand. This is uh, our museum um, for the boats that have sailed around New Zealand. Uh, Spirit of New Zealand is a sail training ship. Part of what you have to do there is uh, get up in the morning, you have to swim a lap around the boat and you sail the whole thing from up in the yards, uh, you're taught to navigate and at the end of the 10 days they elect a skipper who um, captains the boat for the day and the full-time crew don't do any of the sailing so the kids and everybody um, do the same. from downtown Auckland Harbour to Howick, where we're staying with our friends Mark and Julie and Stella. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. He oh. gave us an extra oh. dozen nice. at half price as well. Nice. Thank you. What has Chef Stella made us today? <laughs> we have prawn cocktails and New Zealand oysters. Yes, what's in your vinaigrette? Um, it's red wine vinegar and diced shallots. And then you drizzle some lemon on top of the oysters. Oh my god, what is happening I here? Know. This is like a five star retreat. <laughs> I know. Stella's resort. L little do they know, we may never leave. <laughs> so they told us we could stay as long as we want. I think we should test them. No, they're just being courteous, Megan. They don't mean that. <laughs> This is, uh, yeah, this is wow. very, very nice. You get your prawns going on. Yeah, avocado. <laughs> yeah. It's my Nana's recipe, the prawn cocktails. So, mm. had to message her. So where did you learn your culinary skills? I don't know, Dad taught me a few. Really? Yeah. These are a multi-talented <laughs> family. It's called living in a flat and having to feed yourself. Action. Cocktail hour. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Stella. Oh. So this is a, um, it's a virgin, what is it, blood orange? Yeah. Oh, blood orange. What is it? I don't know. Raspberry. Like a raspberry blood orange martini. Mocktail. Mocktail. Oh. Mm -hmm. With freeze dried raspberries. Mm -hmm. It tastes very real. Yum, yum, yum. Wow. Jet skis. I mean personal watercraft. I don't know anything aside from farts that is more annoying to other people, but so much fun. You did good. We're here at Half Moon Bay. I'm ready for some speed. Yeah? <laughs> it's a bit like riding a horse in the in the waves. Yeah, it's a water Rocco. Horse. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> how's my driving? It's really fun. Your driving's good. Good. Just remembering to keep my mouth loose so that I don't bite my tongue off. <laughs> if you pull out another gourmet, I'm gonna be like, wow. Ooh. 
it's going to be a two-person operation. What is that? Jellic battery. <laughs> One thing every day that scares me. tell you where we are because this place is completely unspoiled. No GPS coordinates, no nothing. Secret spot. Secret spot. Home cooking. Yeah. We haven't really been in a home in like a couple of months. I know. This is one of the things you really miss when you're traveling, Airbnb style or RV style or even catamaran style, is a home cooked meal in a home with all the accoutrement. Well, Mark, <laughs> what's going on here, my friend? Oh yeah. my God, that looks restaurant style. <laughs> and I cooked these in butter. It's very okay. pretty. Been on the road so long, the seasons have changed, and we no longer need to pack all our cold weather stuff. So what are you doing? Okay, this, this whole bag right here is warm weather clothes. Cold weather clothes? Cold weather clothes. We don't need them, we don't need the hats, the sweaters, the long johns. <sighs> Getting out the shorts. But we are gonna keep we're going to take them with us. I guess if we get on a boat where we're sailing back to New Zealand, we'll need them. It's over, baby. I know. Sad. I feel, I feel so at home here at the Cressies. New Zealand's been good to us. I love New Zealand. Do you have a new friend? Yes. I need time. my emotional support animal for the air <laughs> fight. <laughs> business travelers. Yeah, we're business class today. Part of the reason for that was we had to redeem points, uh, a credit on Qantas, and the flight was less than what we had paid. Do we still have to use all your data? a long one. Whoa, are you, are you still here? You made it all the way through? Wow. It was a marathon. Thanks for making it to the end, everybody. We got a little bonus for you. <laughs> yeah. Stick around. Wait till after the patrons credits. And by the way, as always, special thanks to our patrons. You guys have been sticking with us for quite some time here without a boat, but that's <laughs> about to change. Big news coming your way in the next week or two. Thanks everybody. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye bye. There it goes. Can you see the bone in your hand? There you go. 
start. I'll start. We talked about giving you all of our observations. I'm sorry. I'll say the first part. Want to wish you all a happy new year, and we hope that you enjoy our tiki tour of New Zealand. We'll be taking along our chili bin. <laughs> we'll be taking along our chili bin, our togs, and. <laughs> We'll be taking along our chili bin, togs, and jandals. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna look. <clears> not you funny. Nothing. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. We'll be taking along the chili bin, togs, and jandals. Is it jandals or jangles? We want to wish you a happy new year, and we hope that you enjoy our tiki tour of New Zealand. We'll be taking along the chili bin, our jangles. <laughs> we'll be taking along. <laughs> We'll be taking along our chili bin, our togs, and jandals. Okay, sister. I'm not gonna look at you. I'm gonna say the first line, and then I'm not gonna move my head, and then I'm gonna look down real okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna move at all. We'll be taking along our chili bin. <laughs> our... We'll be taking. <laughs> we'll be taking along our. And there's a whole annoyed crew behind the camera. Oh, okay. Like, we'll be taking along our chili bin togs. <laughs> we'll be taking along our chili bin togs and jam. <laughs> we'll be. <clears throat> we'll be taking along the chili bin togs. We'll be taking along the chili bin, togs, and jandals. <laughs> we'll be taking along the chili bin, togs, and jandals. <laughs> I think that one's good enough. Okay. To go tramping in the wads. <laughs> the wops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, to go tramping in the wops. <laughs> <laughs>